Thanks for staying here on the Still I Run Daybreak. Now let's delve into the second discussion of the day. The federal government on Wednesday approved the establishment of 12 new universities amid the ongoing strike by the Academic Staff Union of Universities, ASU. As the industrial action enters 52 days today, the State Minister for Education, Emeka Nwajuba, has decried the decision of the union to persist in its strike action despite negotiations and pleas by the federal government. Nwajuba said the act of shutting down universities nationwide by ASU was pure wickedness on the part of ASU as well as affiliate bodies. Meanwhile, the Nigerian Labour Congress has thrown its weight behind the decision by the Academic Staff Union of Universities, ASO, saying it is a patriotic act and it would help to reposition the education sector. Now, join us to discuss this is Adewale Adimola Justus, a political affairs analyst. Please Thank welcome to so the show. Thank you so much for joining us. Good morning. Mr. Thank Justus. you very much. Thank you very much. It's well, my pleasure. the federal government has just licensed another 12 private universities. What's your reaction to that? Considering the fact that we have an ongoing strike by the Academic Staff Union of Universities, ASU. This is one of the greatest um, mental frauds committed by the government on the populace. Because you see, it is a commercial misfortune if, in the midst of an age long crisis, the government, the Academic Staff Union of Universities, they've been unable to resolve critical issues. And now the same government is licensing private universities who logically would run without the people in this crisis. Hello? Government is unable to resolve issues with the workers in the universities. And the same government, in the midst of the crisis, is licensing new private universities logically it is a backup support for evil. But they, they are saying that these 12 new universities mm -hmm. would be mentored by the already existing ones. Hello, so you are speaking English. You are speaking no, may also be needed. You are speaking English. What is mentoring here? When students are in crisis, when parents are in dilemma, and the economy is, is, is crashing. Mentoring is tertiary, not even secondary. What we are saying is, who is mentoring who? It is workers that are working that would mentor. That's, now, that's the report. I'm bringing to you what the federal government said in the report, saying that these new universities would be mentored, whatever word they used. I don't know why they used the word, but that is what they said, that these universities will be mentored by the already... No, Nigerian And the is, question now is, if the lecturers are still on strike, on strike how will the mentoring work? work? That's I said it's one of the latest mental frauds committed by the government on the people. Because, you see, running through the statistics, Nigeria, the federal government, has 43 universities running. The state government have 48, but private, 79. Hello? The federal, that's the principal dramatic person in this crisis, has only 43. Now, supportive um, sidelines, the state government have 48, but now... Capitalists whose funds could establish universities as private universities have as much as 79. And while that is ongoing, you see, if I may draw you back, 1993, I was robbed of the opportunity of running into a university, courtesy, as a strike. That is the end. Yeah, going through a university. Yeah, no, 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 then okay. my admission. Right. That's, the, 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 that's the beginning of this HND Wahala that we've been going through. You see, a lot of Nigerians have been in this crisis. And now the government, the major party, the principal party in the crisis is looking away. Because if not looking away, why won't you resolve the ongoing crisis? And yet you are, lab you are, you are, you are laboring, you are bedeviling, and you are adding more. Onto the same striking lecturers would mentor. Mentor who? So okay. I okay okay. In, in some instances, what you even have is these um, lecturers striking that are lecturers on, you know, on strike would be the ones to even you know resign and move over to, to the, the private. Most of them are not even resigning yet. They so are yeah, working combined, concurrently. Yeah. Concurrently, that was the crisis that mm. the IPPA yes, ISS so came about. Yes. You understand? Some so. Of, Go some ahead. of them also work concurrently. I, I know some who also resigned, you yep. know, and had to take the very, um, the very faithful, faithful ones. ones, and had yep. to take up the um, jobs private, private investors. Yep. Now.
Now, here's the issue. Even the, your public institutions that complain that they're still understaffed. <sighs> now, if you have more private more universities, private universities. How do you balance the labor force within the needs of the universities in, in question, both from federal to the private ones? Mm. I pity the dilemma of very many Nigerians and non-Nigerians who still follow up mentally the misrepresentations of the government. See, on this, as a business consultant, I want to throw something to you. Now, if I have a vehicle that is not functional, and by the side, maybe I establish a BRT terminus, and the vehicles there are grounded, not working, and side by side, a friend or an ally is supported to establish a transit company around the BRT terminus. What do you see as the future, or hope, if any, for the BRT terminals whose vehicles are grounded? You see, more of our graduates, as a recruitment personnel, yes, no. I observe from a lot of my clients the bold refusal to admit graduates of private schools. Hello? For quality, a lot of employ employers now don't want to take up these graduates of private universities. For what is very obvious, but you will see. I wouldn't so know you're if you were that private the, universities the turn out poor quality. There. Poor quality, I say, and I'm saying poor. Well, we don't have statistics to back that up. But I am, I am a consultant. Yeah, perspective. yeah, with uh, all records. But let's also look at the fact that uh, the Minister of State for Education, Wajuba said that this is an act of wickedness, talking about the ASU strike, which mm -hmm. has entered its 52nd day today. Uh, but he is saying that in comparison with the fact that uh, the polytechnic lecturers have gone back to work, work uh, while they are waiting and expecting that the federal government will do the needful. Perhaps there's a case of mistrust here. The, the ASU uh, lecturers are perhaps not trusting enough, saying that, Despite the fact that the MOU has been on since 2009, they are not uh, able or willing to trust that the federal government would do the needful. See, in the doctrine of morality, there's something we do ask. Does a man bear moral justification to contribute on an issue which does not affect him? The minister you have quoted, I'm surprised you, you wasted effort in paying attention to a, mis a misrepresentation I just gave by you a what politician. He said. It's, not yeah. a uh -huh. effort. it's confusing Nigerians because such an idea ought not to have been aired. It's a distrust. Because what, as he said, go and find out, his children are not here. If they are mistakenly around Nigeria, they are not in any of the government owned institutions. They have enough money to see their children through privately funded institutions. So it would say more of what, what is this trust here? People are working. Their terms of con and conditions of work are derogatory. They are never happy. We've been on this asso in Broglio over decades. Oh, yeah. unresolved. unresolved. And somebody in office who is supposedly responsible is misjiving. L let's look at this. You just touched on the issue of um, th this being a long, um, decade long, or decades, in not Brooklyn. only just a decade. Decades. It's been oh, for yeah. decades. Now, let's look at it. Why is it a recurring motive that the federal government is failing to fulfill its own part of the bargain? Um, you, as you said, um, it's been on for so long. 2009, it seemed like there was finally a headway with that agreement. It seemed perfect on paper. Both parties agreed and all. But the federal government failed over and over again to fulfill its own part of the bargain. Remember, the 2020 agreement they signed in terms mm -hmm. of the MOU mm -hmm. was a fallback of that of 2009. Yep. That's where the superstructure came from. So the question is, why is the federal government failing to fulfill its own part repeatedly from 2009 till 2022 is 13 years? Let's even ditch 2009 and mm -hmm. start from 2020. 2020. This 2022, that's two years. Why are we having this recurring? from the federal government. Thank you very much. For an average Nigerian who is just 20 years of age, you would agree with me that we have been having serial leadership irresponsibility. A set of people who are not responsible. What do I mean by responsibility? How do you feel as a leader if the populace are groaning and they are bewildering on the issue of education? We've never had anybody in office that is willing all at headly to make the populace go to school. Let me shock you. If it is true that we have leaders that are mindful of the becoming and the future of the populace, ASU is on strike. 
43 universities to the federal government, 48 to the state government, 79 to capitalists, politicians. And now again, while the strike is bleeding, you are adding 12 to it. It's a fraud, mental fraud. Our leadership has been irresponsible. They have no motion positive whatsoever to enhance the lot of Nigerians. Because I read something overnight. See, ASU has been working or has been talking so much about remuneration. Mm -hmm. But you see, because sometimes in uh, 2019, they came up with, an, with a figure about a trillion and six that would be required to even enhance the 43 federal institutions. But unfortunately, our wombling federal government came up to debunk such that they had no such fund, no problem. Now, ASU now came up with a suggestion. If we would sufficiently fund these institutions, we would need to raise the tuition. But my dear brother, the figures that ASU churned out, 300,000 Naira. Per student. Per student in a federal institution. Sorry, how many Nigerians will make do with that? that? So you could see where that is coming from. And now our leaders, all put together, are bravely informed of that. They are aware of that. And that's why they are strangulating the more ASU. Let's look at this. Um, strike uh, Industrial actions are recurring from Of ASU. course, yes. I don't think there's any Nigerian students who passed through over the last 30 mm, years. The tertiary. And, without, know, tertiary. Without. And you didn't experience one or two. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure anyone actually spent four years. Mm. <laughs> without in, one. Within a four years course. Especially if it's a state university yeah. you know, or uh, federal. Exactly. So here's my question. Um, the, the recurring action by ASU in terms of industrial action mm -hmm. seems not to have any effect. Mm. Sometimes they go six months, nine months, and federal government, oh, come, come, come. We just, just romance them, toast them a little and then They are stone six months. Th Now that brings me to the question, should ASU take a new dimension by taking this up legally to the point where in, if possible it gets down to the Supreme Court and the Supreme Court gives a judgment mm. that will probably, probably Especially favor Especially since because there's a standing MOU. Uh, exactly. So if, if, it were to be, MOU, if, if it were to be a Supreme Court out of Nigeria, I might stand by your point. If it were to be a Supreme Court outside Nigeria. You see, when we mention federal government, the federal government is not PMB, it's not Buhari. Mm -hmm. The executive... The legislature, the which is the big men in the National Assembly, mm -hmm. the two arms, the judiciary. The judiciary is where you have the Supreme Court. Yes. You see, there was a time the president went ahead to sign an executive order. Immediately, governors of the 36 states of the country went to court. On getting to court, a part, an arm of the same federal government in whose favor and with whose vision the executive order was aired, nullified it. Are we together? Mm -hmm. Adi Bin, we have an independently objective the judiciary. judiciary. Mm. And thereafter, even when the judiciary comes up with a ruling, do we have a legislative structure that is ten and normal enough to support it's the implementation of whatever the court will come out with? But the strike actions aren't getting results. Results. It may not get the saying that if you keep doing the same, same thing, thing the same way, way it's madness. Expect, exactly. Yes, you know you it's can madness. expect a different result. The strike action may not get results, even if another methodology is adopted. Why? The dramatic personnel who owns these private universities. Then who makes up the workforce required for this new to be mentored universities? The same people that work, the same ASU that work in the federal state owned institutions, most of them co work concurrently in this privately owned institution. The same people who deliberately and unheartedly fail and refuse and plan never to ever fund the institutions own these private universities. Hello? The same people in government, I mean people in government, yes. either directly or, or indirectly, indirectly, they are in power. They have all it takes to make the schools work. They deliberately refuse to make them work because they own these private institutions. You seem to be so vindictive about the federal government, especially when it comes to this ASU issue. But let's also look at the other side of the corner or the other side of the table, mm -hmm. talking about ASU. Sorry. Please, hold on, please. ASU has been going on strike for about 16 times. Over what? 
According, hold on, according to reports, since 1999, mm -hmm. ASO has embarked on about 16 strike endless strike actions. You know, strike just because of this same issue. Issue. And we've not gotten any results. Students are going back home, mm -hmm. nothing to do. Mm -hmm. And we keep seeing this recurring decimal over and over again. But isn't there a place of coming to some form of compromise? And saying, okay, let's meet at this middle, at ground, middle ground because of these students, because of their future. Sorry, I wish UCLA, we had time. Jam, hold on. Yep. Jam we, we is supposed to hold in May, I think, 6 or 16 now. Mm -hmm. And this strike, they're talking about extending, having uh, some form of extension of the strike mm -hmm. till May. You know, the time surpasses the time when uh, Jam is supposed to hold. Yes. And now we're talking about admission. This will definitely affect the exactly. admission year. Yep. And so looking at all of this, Shouldn't there be some form of middle ground, compromise, coming together to reason and say, okay, this is for the, the way sake forward. Of this. Sorry, I'm a process consultant. Mm -hmm. And for my knowledge, for my professionalism, there's what we call order. I mentioned dramatic personnel, the government. We have ASU and probably the victims down here. But sorry, if you and I have issues to grind, you are the top of the desk. I am down here. Asu said, we need white cops to take tea. Government is the employer of Asu. Government should come up and tell the world, Asu, white cop, take. Asu, white cop, I don't have. The moment you are, see, this is employment. Hello? Asu people are not spirits. They buy fuel. They buy diesel. They rent houses and they pay for transport. They need money. This is livelihood. What that man does as his job should be rewarded. If it bothers us, see, these other guys, you say, you say, I am vindictive. Yes, categorically. Why? If Asu is on strike for nine years, how does it affect the man at the villa? So that's where the question is, because these same people are the ones that are affected. So shouldn't they look for a way to resolve the issue? Ooh. I'm talking about ASU, um, the lecturers. The many resolution is not have, within their Many of teeth. them have their students, their, their children their children. in this university. So the people ASU. who you are fighting have their children outside the country. That is why the attention of our media issue should go more on the government. Hello? See, I have brought this material up for sale i am selling and you are interested in buying i said i'm selling for 20 naira you said you have 10 naira to offer hello can you force me to sell so, to you at 10 naira no asu is an employee as a group the employer is the government all able government all able i said now asu says we are coming to work we need a glass of tea now, employer, because I'm happy that we're all here. If no seat was provided for you, I'm sure this program wouldn't be this way. So what do you expect of an employer that has brought you in here? See, we call it responsibility. Hello? Accountancy and management teaches what we call organization. Organization is the assignment of responsibility and the concurrent resources. You have engaged human beings under a group and they term themselves ASU. But for ASU to work, please, I wouldn't know if you have visited any of these moribund federal institutions. You would weep, particularly if you have traveled outside Nigeria and you see what a school should look like. Now, a lecturer had to buy and bring in a generator of ease with a marker board to the university campus to enable teaching. Hello? Is that bad? So okay. what do you propose? As my a way pro my of proposal it? is more attention. See, I need just two arms of the government. Let there be legislation, workable legislations, guiding the, the, the whole of this. You're saying the current ones. Yes. Uh, and let there be. Let there be. And where, what is the target of my legislation? Like I was telling my younger, my brother. You see, the reason there has been no answer and response and success is because the men in whose hands lie the resources, they are not in any way affected by either the strike or oh. functionality of oh, the schools. Absolutely. So if there are mechanisms through legislation whereby, see, I said something some time ago, I said, if anybody is contesting an election, mm -hmm. 
please do not force. Don't let us admit ancient and modern Methuselahs to contest. Mm -hmm. Let us allow people who still have children in school. And now we have a pre-election MOU yes. that compels the contestant to sign and tell us, upon winning this election, I must live in the community. Mm. You contested in Ojodubega. Mm. Having won the election, is mm. that the man lives. You must live in the community, stage one. All your children must attend public schools. Mm. Hello? But isn't that going but to be against the... Exactly, on their fundamental exactly, human rights. Where is the fundamental human right? When now the populace is worse for it. Because that's why I said we start with legislation. Do you understand the fundamental, the background here? The law. Let us, because Nigeria... But the law shouldn't contradict, co contradict itself. itself. No, it's exactly. not. That is the amendment. Nothing is cast in stone. Because when we copied most of this fundamental doctrine, equity, From and all these things, it was because they were premised on functioning systems, functioning environment. Now that ours has not been functioning, we can... Tweak it. Exactly. Do you understand? Because what you may not be able to... See, we were in Nigeria. When ASU was on strike, the sitting president, Chief Olusha Gwambasunjo, was funding a private university. Side by side, the sitting vice president... Atikwa Bakar was funding a private university. How wouldn't there be continuous association? So, so you're I, suggesting that all public, uh, public office, office holders, holders should have their children in Sincerely, because if their children are home with my children and your children, if while traveling, we all need to be ferried through BRT. Hello? If we want to travel, all of us, and will be ferried through a public infrastructure. If the infrastructure was not working as a yesterday night, and the governor is aware that he would travel through the same facility, they will make it work overnight. But do we have okay. the time to wait for this legislation to be fixed? Sorry, how long? How long? See, Bishop David Oyepo once asked the question. He said, "How many lawyers are lawmakers? And even we have lawyers, professionals who are mentally alert and up there. Legislation is not spiritual. Actually, you're Let's, right in that regard because we see a lot of, you know, there was a time they passed we, yes, about 46, uh, we, we have all uh, you know, laws within or bills rather. Less than 10 minutes. With the, that political backup, if they are interested. You know, we say, I said something some time ago. I said, see, about carpet crossing, political carpet crossing. Somebody is elected on this platform. Is sitting as a governor, but tomorrow for political issues, he wants to move and he moves easily. Let us make a law that compels a sitting politician to resign, then come on a new platform and recontest. Contest. Yes, but okay. as regards but you remember this... that they never held on to that because it wouldn't favor, favor them. them. Mm. I, I understand the, the need, um, the talk of um, legislation. legislation. Uh, the, the end of the 7th Assembly, the presided by David Mark, um, we had, as you said, over 46 in less than 10 minutes. Those in favor, mm. I, I, mm. there was no second reading. So it reading means it's all. possible. So it's possible. But let's let's move away from that. Let's still, you know, bring this back home and um, look at the broader scale of things. Now that you, you've you given us a statistics, 43, um, 43 federal, federal 48, 48 state, state university 79 and, um, private plus 12, 79. now making 91. Now let's look at it this way. The more private universities we have, and um, the more recurring um, industrial actions are, it means that our education system, or our tertiary education system, is crippled for the common man because the children have to be home for months before they can even make advancement mm. in their educational pursuits. Now, the question will be this what is the state of our education? In terms of what we have now in future, um, in terms of our universities, what's the future of our education right now? I'm, I'm asking because the common man will find it more difficult to gain admission into these schools. These as schools. you said, not even um, gain, it's to seek. To seek, rather. Because as you said, you have um, th those who are finishing from the secondary schools mm -hmm. who want to take jam. Jam. So you have a roll up of, um, a rollover, rather. Backlog. Of, a backlog, backlog of you know, admission students and all. And it makes the federal institutions more congested, while the private ones, the average Nigerian can't afford it. Can't mm -hmm. afford. Yes, we have more of that. Of that. So, What's the future? What, what, what do you think the future is right now? For the future education? is as bleak as the present. The future, if, there, if at all there will be any. Because, like I was saying, sorry, I'm sorry for bringing in my private, uh, because no, I consult for schools. Presently, I have some schools I consult for. You see, each time you go there, 
Each time you watch the process, each time you see what is ongoing, you realize that there is no future. Not that there may be no future. There is none. Because you will see, of all these schools, the people in government who should make things happen are the ones funding the schools. Private universities, almost everyone is aware that, no, at least 1.7 million, 3.7 million, 9 point something million. But how many Nigerians can go that way? And unfortunately, see, the other bias I read out. Because ASU now, in the quest for sufficient funding, ASU came up with a suggestion that Mube, 300,000 tuition. The, average the reason the queues will continually exist at Unilag, IFE, Uniben, Benin, mm -hmm. Ibado, and the rest is because of the reasonably or, or comparatively affordable tuition fee. Mm. But now, even the same people who are stakeholders and masterminds of the embroiled system, so to say, are now making suggestions that will cause Christ to come down. Because 300,000 university tuition. Times 10 of minimum wage. Hmm. If at all there will be minimum wage. Then, well, then currently it's 30,000. Do you understand? So you will see, like I said, we have a structural defect. Okay, for all of um, the challenges we've talked about, let, let's also address solutions. I know you talked about the legislative Legislation, angle, yeah. But is that the only um, No, not at all. It's just, it's just, it's just primal. So l let's have more. Then. Now, like I said, you see, the people make the system. The people make the government. You see, we are all, most of us clap today. I, let, me ask, let me just share with you. If someone had contested an election, and on winning the election, he relocates from your community. He lives in Ekoi. And after some seven months, he strolls back to say hi to you guys. On getting there, there's no light. How does he feel it? And unfortunately, when it comes to the same environment, people who have been sleeping, living, waking, and even betting in perpetual darkness, Clap hands. Let us chase these guys out with shame. Hello? Chase, do not chase them. All how, our how present po office, political office holders. Whoever you vote into power and commences misbehavior immediately, please let him feel that God has rejected him like in Saul. But you know how that. The political process of recalling. Recall, no, recalling is even is, is, uh, is tertiary. Okay. The interpersonal accolade. Because but, while they are doing all this that they are doing, most people still clap for them. Wouldn't that be verbal assault if people decide to... Excuse you? me, if verbal assault becomes the order of the day in the face of pains and strangulations, let us watch and see what comes. Definitely. But what effect does that the, have? We they, they, feel, on yes, they, the feel, they feel uncomfortable. See, each of those things on Twitter pinches... These guys. We're not in the Western world where uh, ministers, presidents, resign. and it's governors resign. It's a taboo. It, 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 but do you realize really in, the last, in the last four years, we have been having a different form set of Nigerians. Politically, people are becoming more active mm -hmm. and responsive. Hello? Things are getting better. Because you will see, in the wake up of um, 2023 now, you will hear all sorts of of responses and comments which we never had in those days because it used to be a taboo to openly come and speak against even a non-performer but with the enlightenment we've been having around here that's what i'm trying to drive here let us realize it is because the laws have not been helping the structures have not been helping budgeting have not been helping because what is the essence of budgeting budgeting would have been okay provide 1.6 trillion for asu by mid-year Budget monitoring, confirm how much. But instead of doing that, do you know what is happening in Nigeria now? Legislators, senators, and House of Rep members are now contractors who take hold of constituency allowances. But even on the issue of budgeting, it's really been abysmal. abysmal. Talking about the it, it amount is of over abysmal. It is over been, abysmal. Uh, abysmal is even an understatement. And Nigeria has the highest, highest number of uh, out of school children. Out of school in the children. World. So going back, like I said, see, please, we have a fewer, a lesser number of irresponsible leaders vis a vis Nigerian, the populace. Because these people that have been dragging us in this much sling of educational debt. They are less than, you know, in, in, in total, we have about 17,000, I think 772 public office holders versus 240 million Nigerians. Let us try. In the eye and the face of the law, true morality 
make life difficult for these guys. Let us woo them and let them know that they have failed and they are failures. Because pressing them when they come around, pressing them when they are this, is what is making some of them to continue. Because, see, now private university, see, we are talking private universities. Have you considered private uh, primary schools and secondary schools? Mm. It's worse. But you know, you just touched a sensitive, a sensitive issue. issue when you talk about Nigerians not praising these people. You'd that would go, uh, touch the area of inducement, money inducement, mm -hmm. because Psychophancy. these people, what uh, the leaders of Nigeria do is to impoverish the people and then use that same means to reach out to those people so that they have no other option, they have no other means to. You know, but to just be sycophant to the government. And so what other option are you putting before these people? You are saying that they shouldn't respond to the people the way they were, or to the leaders. Leaders. The way the leaders they, want them yeah, to respond. Yeah. But, but in cases where they are being induced, where they do not have the things that these people are bringing to them, what do you, what fate stands or awaits these people? Sorry, for those who read a bit of the Bible, the sale of birthright is an exchange. The moment you sell, you exchange that which belongs and resides with, with you. you. The moment inducement or incitement comes your way and you open up your vault, therefore, it's gone. And that is why, you know, it's, it's this um, common dictum that says you don't talk while you are eating. You don't talk. While it's but a you know the current, the current poverty situation in Nigeria. Does not take away your sensibility. That's the point. How many Nigerians are able to withstand the current uh, hardship? See, I was, I was, I was at a, a mechanical garage on Saturday. We got talking and the guy said the major trouble here is that people are not willing to manage. Nigerians are not willing to run through stress and pains. They rather sell off their bad rights for peanut immediately. And that is why we make You know, when my friend was asking, future... There's no future because mentally we are not prepared. Hello? Mentally we are not prepared. Let me share. I wouldn't know if we have time. If I share something sure. with you. No. Just last week I had a client who needed just 100,000 US dollars for an LC. We ran around. We went around all these places. No show. But at the end we were introduced to somebody. Who introduced us to somebody. And the somebody now said, sorry sir. I did mean it is a million dollars who would process for you. Say, Jesus, million dollars. We're talking a hundred thousand dollars. He said, Oga, this one million dollar, if you come with a million dollar, within 30 minutes, it will be done. Because for every dollar, there is 30 naira. Meaning, if you want us to process one million dollar LC for you, we'll get it done for you. Because 30 naira will go. That is 30 million for the boys. Mm. We now said, ah, well, you know, add 30 million to this. What is left for the businessman? He said, okay, that is why the Indians, the Chinese, the Pakistanis, and all these other guys, that's why they are doing it. And see, our own people in the banks, Nigerians, are the ones now taking this 30 naira from them, supporting these foreigners, and then killing, you see, like I said, so what is the hope of local business people? Now, competition will definitely kill them out because they do it for competitors. Who are able to raise a million dollar? Okay, let, let's let's bring this you know um, back to context. It's obvious um, you know creating new universities isn't the solution. Not to, at the all. Not at all. In our tertiary education. None. Let's look at this as you know a, a prime example. How do we move from here now? Because um, we still have the new um, form, um, formally established um, universities and um, being underfunded, on understaffed, the and what have you. How do we move in terms of concrete solutions to ensure that not just creation of universities, oh, but that the ones we have are even functioning first for the average common Nigerian? You know, I am a process person, like I said. That's why my belief is strongly hinging on legislation. Okay. Let us see if we can, because you see, in court, you know, it is not whoever is right that wins a case, it is whoever has basis, and can make terminal and directional references. All right, and that's where we'll pull the plugs. Thank you so much, Adewali Ademola Justice, uh, for your take on this uh, particular issue this it's morning. It's my pleasure. All right, uh, that, is, uh, that is it on that issue of ASU, but we will be back to talk more. Please stay with us.